And then the place went out of business, so that bummed me out. But I really liked the film bar as a venue for casuals. I'd really like to get to a place like that someday where we have, um, yeah, like a bar or something we can just frequent at. That would really hammer home that vibe. Like imagine if we imagine if we could like run a weekly at Cornish Pasty or something. <laughs> you know that's that like you're talking yeah. about. Yeah. 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 That's true. Turn on the lights, guys, please. <laughs> yeah, I got I got some candle candle wax on my monitor. <laughs> to the absolute guard podcast yes welcome this is uh episode 41 my name is benny and as always i'm joined by my co-host john who has used a lot of his uh own personal drive meter as he spent a lot of time playing the beta over this weekend i am indeed in burnout right now and i have no <laughs> idea like it's even yesterday i was just so burnt out and like i thought today i'd be like okay i'm gonna go back into get, go back into society and do regular things again and i'm having a hard time getting back into that <laughs> <laughs> haven't hit that recovery state yet <laughs> yeah yeah i think i think the meter is like two-thirds of the way full right now <laughs> <laughs> still gotta deal with the the rush down and <laughs> the mental stack is too high yeah yeah there's a lot of debate right now about like whether or not burnout is is good um like a lot of early on early impressions from the japanese players are like you know burn out quickly um anyway i uh, sorry i yeah my all, all lot to say too my mind is like super like scatterbrained right now because i've just been like staring at a computer screen for for about three days straight <laughs> and then even the day that like the last day was on sunday and today you know we had monday to recover before we shot this show uh but monday i was also just looking at clips from everybody throughout the weekend anyway <laughs> yeah uh, so it's been it's been kind of a crazy weekend um how about you how was how was yours uh well i didn't play the beta too much um I I told myself I I would try a different character, but I mean again with the, with the limited time, I was just like you know what let me just play Gal because then like even then, when I started playing I completely forgot like game mechanics and everything like I was sitting there, yeah. um, I think in my very first man one I didn't even set the buttons right so I had like water controls and Luke is my character and I was just like oh man what happened and I was like great there goes yeah. my first placement match I'm just gonna lose right, and then after I got that set. The next match when I actually was playing Guile, like I didn't even think about using my like EX moves because I didn't think I had them. Like that's how you know I hadn't been playing basically since you know the other beta, so it's my mind just wasn't there at all. And I was like waiting for the bar to fill up, and I was just like, hold on, I have access to EX Sonic booms and flash kicks and everything oh. right now. Like what am I waiting for? Got it. Yeah, like just the idea of like starting with full meter at the beginning of the game and or beginning mm -hmm. of the round rather, like an alpha game. Yeah. Yeah. Just having access to all those kind of moves from the beginning is, you know, it's still, it's still a, a big difference compared to, yeah, the five. other Street Fighter yeah. games for the, yeah, five, four, yeah, you just, you know, you start with nothing really. I, uh, I, I did kind of a mechanics breakdown with Tanner a couple of weeks back, but one of the big points we had was the fact that you start with, uh, with full meter, basically fixes a lot of the problems that Street Fighter Five had, because Street Fighter Five like. You know, every a lot a big concern was about offense being too strong, and um, you know, like round one start in Street Fighter Five, someone hit, you know dashes up and hits you with a strong, and then you're, they're plus, and you just have to take it. You can't do anything about it, right? Because you don't have any yeah. meter, so you don't have that invincible reversal because they nerfed DPS, and then you don't have V reversal because it's round one start, so you don't have any red red bar either. So you have no options but just to take that shit, and. Um, yeah. You know, so that, you know, everyone was like, DPs suck now because because of that. But uh, with six, they were like, well, we're going to keep DPs like the way they are. Uh, and in my in my opinion, they're fair now and that they require meter. But yeah. we'll, we'll throw you a bone and here's now you can do them at round start. So you don't feel helpless out of the gates. Yeah. 
I mean, that's an interesting, interesting way to think about it too, right? Like you have access to those tools in the beginning too, but mm-hmm. uh, I was honestly just thinking about uh, in terms of somebody that's very like an offensive heavy player, right? That just goes in and rushes down and, yeah. you know, you know, uses those resources a lot uh, uh, excessively in the beginning. Like, yeah, they might burn out quickly, but you could be at a 40%, 50%, you know, life deficit at the very beginning if they just decide to, you know, cash out basically. Yeah. Yeah. And that that's a, that's a, a supposed strategy for, um, that the East coast guys have mentioned. I rather, I was watching one of Eli Joe's videos and he said, there is a, like a school of thought that round one start you burn because at round one, uh, neither player has any, any super meter yet. So everyone's damage mm-hmm. potential is pretty low. Um, and so it's okay to burn out at round one because nobody can really make you hurt for it. Um, I don't know if I completely agree with that, but like I have seen a lot of people play like that just like successfully basically play like you don't care about burnout. And if anything, yeah. you know, get as many drive bars as you can in the round. Cause that's more than your opponent's going to have. Yeah. Well, that's a, yeah. I don't know. I guess I never really thought about it in terms of that, but I mean, uh, yeah, not having the super meter, but yeah, that's, that's one way to look at it. Yeah. The fact that the, they're broken out in the two different meters changes so much i think it's it's, there's so much like extra strategy involved with how you use it and then also based on like it's almost like a hand in a card game right because you're like how Mm -hmm. you how you use your meter kind of shows your hand and like your your intention for what kind of situations you want to set up um yeah and it that in in a sense is that player expression that everybody was looking for (laughs) yeah yeah i mean again like that i think that's that's still probably my favorite thing about this game is the kind of the freedom of choice that you have to, you know, how you want to use, use that meter and how you want to dictate the game. Like if you want to play defensive and, you know, save your meter for defensive options or stuff like that, then you can, I mean, if you want to go all in, you know, go ahead and hope for the best and, you know, hope that you can survive burnout if that happens. Yeah. And, you know, go from there. Did you get to mess around with um, the drive impact at all? Uh, Not really. I mean, I was, um, again, it was like, kind of collecting myself because like i think in my, i did my place of matches right and I, I lost the first four one one i was it was a fluke right i was just like that didn't count you know i didn't controls the character was all off oh yeah totally. the other three I, I lost legit i was just like okay while i was getting my bearings and then and then i won like the last six and i was just like oh, okay nice. now i'm kind of getting the you know i'm kind of getting the feeling for like what i'm supposed to do but you know nothing was optimized like i wasn't using drive rush or anything like that you know it was typical sonic boom flash kick plays and then uh, trying to react to DIs or, you know, implement that into my game. Got it. And it makes me think about, like, there's been a lot of uh, talk about that, too, in terms of, like, the game being difficult or, the like, the mental stack that's required yeah. to play the game. And it's it's a lot. There's a lot going on in terms of things you have to watch out for, uh, conversions, like, what's your best conversion off of this in terms of, like, do you spend the drive rush? Like um yeah i don't know it's gonna be like typically you know in in fighting games you have you know you have a bnb right the solid meterless combo or whatnot have you that that does good damage and you know but at this point it's like you have access to all this meter from the start so it's like what exactly yeah. is going to be a bnb for a character nowadays it's going to be like yeah this is your best no damage no meter usage combo but when you've got so much meter to use like you know, what's it, are you going to use it all or you're going to, you know, one or two, or you call them bars or I've seen people call them pips or whatnot. Sure. I, it's, it's definitely like a, I I don't really know which, uh, which mechanic is going to take precedent overall. Like there's this, the concept of like meter economy and having, like, like you said, having, having the meters like be separate and then having, to decide how much of each top me- uh, each of the drive meter you want to spend, you know, every, uh, just adding a cost to every action you take essentially increases the mental load for every one of those actions. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's, it's a lot. I, I was, I was actually thinking about that the other day. Cause um, I was talking to somebody that, that played uh you know, pretty much every early fighting game, like Street Fighter 2, Virtua Fighter, um, Alphas, I think. Uh, and, um, you know, he mentioned to me that, like, 
like this game it, it's hard um it, it's it's like a lot to think about and the neutral isn't necessarily fun um and so like the, 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 it was it was more of like a hey i'm not sure if this is this game is for me kind of kind of vibe i got and it got okay. me thinking a lot about like you know it what does that mean about this kind of game is, is this game for street fighter 2 veterans is this game for street fighter 3 veterans even um mm -hmm. and i i i don't know like i i've never i've never ever been part of a a uh, a game release where the new game that's coming out is considered harder than the old than the game before it uh usually the, mm. the games have just gotten easier and easier and simpler and simpler and yeah. you know you get the usual discourse of people being mad oh they're dumbing down my video game and stuff but now like <laughs> yeah it's the opposite where it's like people that i you know i i respect their opinions for having been in the scene for so long i'm like man if like it did we do did something wrong happen here? <laughs> yeah maybe they're doing too much yeah yeah i, I don't know like I, I just i i i do have concerns about this game being considered too hard um that it's tiring to play even um yeah i i think that like in the news a couple of weeks ago there was one of the one of the twitter arguments was around the uh versus mode and it was about the demo, right? The quick rematch mode yeah. and how you could like skip through it and stuff. And, you know, some game developers chimed in and were like, Hey, no, we don't want you to skip this because we want to force the player to have a cooldown period. And so they don't, you know, like they, they can kind of contemplate and process the match. And then the player base largely was like, how dare you waste my time <laughs> by not letting me skip. And it yeah. got me thinking a lot about that. And I'm like, cause it's almost like a, uh it's like an artistic thing too it's like hey yeah. who knows better the author of the thing or the person consuming it yeah oh yeah i mean yeah, that yeah, that goes into like star wars and stuff like that right and george lucas oh, yeah. and you know that's like probably the prime example of hey well this isn't how it's supposed to be in the universe well who are you to tell me this is my universe yeah and then right? at the and end of the day just... like whose universe is it <laughs> is yeah. it the fans is it the community like <laughs> It's not. It's definitely not George Lucas's anymore. He cashed out. <laughs> yeah, that's not, like you know, when it comes to when it comes to to fighting games and stuff like that. I mean, that's like you said. That's been something that over time, like yeah, things have been simplified, right? Like the players that played Street Fighter Two, you know, when it came to Street Fighter Three and stuff like that, it was you know, parries was a big change, and it was just like, well, my fireball game is gone now because they could just parry and they get meter. Like, you know, yeah. that part of the game is gone. Then you had four where it was like the, the FADC dragon punches. And they're like, oh, now you don't have, even have to commit. Like, you know, when that first game came out, right? You have the meter, you know, take the risk. And if you have the meter, you can make it safe. Mm -hmm. And, you know, they changed that as the game went on. But again, it was it was one of those things where there was uh, a lot of negativity around certain things, certain game mechanics. Yeah, those and it, it, it's it's. It feels a little different, like because I I definitely see that every time a new game comes out, right? Like it's like, hey, I was good at the old game, and now the new game doesn't reward the things that I like that I liked about the old game. Like parries are bullshit. Parries are rewarded now, but I didn't. I don't know how to parry. That's new, you yeah. know. And so the, the, therefore, the mechanic is bullshit. And um, the there's there's a player that I talked to recently again a different player but a similar background pedigree og um who brought up the phrase imposter syndrome uh, and that's something that i i was not expecting to hear i i, I kind of came into this thinking like hey everybody always talks about new street fighter games as being the return of street fighter right and yeah. um the return of footsies and the return of fundamentals. And it's, it's kind of a, it's kind of a running joke in our community now that that's never true because they're so different. Like how you pointed out. Yeah. And, <laughs> but so part of me, a little bit of me was just like, man, I can't wait to, to, to see how I measure up against these, these old heads that, that no real street fighter. And yeah. now those old heads are the ones being like having imposter syndrome being like, Hey, was I actually as good as I really was? you know and that kind of opened my eyes a little bit and it made me a little a question my uh question my motivations cuz that's just like i i don't think i ever want to play somebody to the point where it makes them 
doubt what their memory of the game of the games that they they were good at in the past were yeah i thought that i thought i wanted to be that good and i wanted to be like yeah i'm not that good i can hang with the ogs i can i can i can beat them even but yeah. like i don't want to ruin people's enjoyment of the game like i'm yeah well i, I mean know. that's that's kind of something like you don't really have control over i mean you know i know everybody has kind of like a sense of pride like i i would definitely say i'm i'm kind of in that boat too like when it comes to like street fighter right i've played other games i've played marvel i've played tekken but this has always been like my bread and butter game right like if yeah. it was you know oh you can beat me in tekken see me in street fighter you know that kind of mess <laughs> yeah and you know and i've um i've thought about other players that have come into the street fighter scene from other games people like tanner or people that like i knew from playing tekken like uh will get paid those yeah. kind of people and it's not that i don't think that they're great players. Like they can be great players at any game, you know, based on their skill set. But I remember initially when Tanner was coming to play Street Fighter V, and I was just like, "This is my game." But he was running through me uh, initially playing, you know, Rashid. Yeah, I and that. that was a tough thing for me to deal with because I was just like, "Like, am I really good at Street Fighter or?" Is it a product of the game? Is it the product of my character change? Like there was a lot of stuff going on mentally that I had to think about. And it was just like, you know, at the end of the day, he's just a good fighting game player. And, you know, there's a lot of skills that'll translate between different games, whether that's that's footsies and neutral and those kind of things, or whether there's like the more technical aspect in terms of option selects or, or frame traps, uh, learning those kind of mechanics or learning yeah. uh, those kind of uh, those kind of things. Yeah, I, I, I'm learning that too. Like, I, I feel like I actually might have learned that lesson later than you, because I, I remember that time period was it was right when Street Fighter Five launched. I think the, the sessions you're referring to are the boot camps that I ran. Yeah. Um. Yep. And yeah, Tanner was up on on the top level station by the end of the by the end of the circuit. And um. Yeah, it, it. it I think I had like a chip on my shoulder with five, where, mm -hmm. you know, I. I was good at that game at launch. I, I, I got second and undefeated and I only lost to Snake Eyes. I beat Ray Ray. I beat Chris G. I beat a lot of like well-known players. Mm -hmm. And, you know, obviously it was launch game, but, you know, that meant something to me. Um, and, yeah. you know, at, at that time though, I was just surrounded by vitriol about how the game sucked. Um, about how Street Fighter, like the launch went really poorly. Uh, the eight frames yeah. of input lag. Uh, the the greatest sin of it not being four, you know? Yeah. <laughs> um, and so, you know, I, I had a chip on my shoulder. And I was like, you know what? I, I'm good at this street fighter and I want to prove to you guys that this is real street fighter. Cause everyone was saying it, this is not real street fighter because again, it's, it's a new game. It's that's ass. It's got all yeah. this new shit. I hate these V triggers, stuff like that. And so like, I, I kind of, you know, it was almost a vindictive pursuit of being like proving that, one, I was right, and then two, like this game is good. Um, and Street Fighter Five Season One and Two was not a good game. <laughs> yeah. uh, so I've come around on that a little bit. Uh, but even even with Six, like I, I get flashes of that sometimes where I'm just like, man, I, uh, you know, I, I want to prove with Six now that Five wasn't a fluke and that everybody actually is bad at Street Fighter and Four was the fluke or Three was the fluke, and I'm. You know, I, 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 again, with, with my friend who brought up imposter syndrome uh, the other day, as well as somebody else saying that the game is too hard, I was just like, man, that's the fruits of, of that vindictive pursuit. That's not cool. Because um, <laughs> I like these people and I want them to play the video yeah. game with me. Um, it's, it's a weird, it's, 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 it's not, a, not a good look. Uh, I, I got to the end of the rainbow. I didn't like what I saw. <laughs> yeah, I, again, that's a, that's a tough situation. And it's, it's also tough. You got to think from like the, the OG, the veteran perspectives too, right? Uh, a lot of, a lot of it or what you're talking about. I think about uh, when it came to like Marvel three, right? When Marvel three came out, yeah. there was a lot of, first there was a lot of hype. Everybody was excited for it. And then when they learned about X factor and the crazy comebacks and stuff like that, there was a lot of negativity from the vets of Marvel versus Capcom two. Like I wasn't really heavily into, into that game at all. Sure. But there was there was a lot of negativity about the fact that, well, these guys weren't any good at this older game, but they're good in this game. 
like you know it, it you know they were just trying to kind of downplay those people being good at that game and a lot of times i think that's unfair like yeah. um i think you know there's when it comes to street fighter like you know like, like we mentioned like there's so much difference between all the versions of the game like it's not like tekken like tekken's probably the biggest example of a legacy game right it's very similar sure you know it, to its past iterations there's not a ton of change i mean there's new mechanics like the rage rage stuff and all that stuff but for the most part a lot of the like the movement and the and the the, the way the game plays is you know like the older games and i think for some people that just might be just something really tough for them to swallow in terms of street fighter and it's just like just because i was good at street fighter 2 or i was good at alpha or i was good at 4 like some people just have this belief that they should be good at this game too yeah. and you know that might not be the case depending on how the mechanics are you know maybe what you're good at in street fighter 2 like say for instance like neutral and footsies in the fireball game right there's a whole lot more advanced stuff than that going on like that i mean that stuff's still important but yeah you know you're looking at again the mental stack all these other options that people have there's a lot more anti-fireball tech than there was in past games you know some matchups in street fighter 2 like you were just like this is like an almost impossible matchup to win if you didn't you know if you didn't have a fireball too yeah and nowadays it's like you know so many characters have ways to deal with that kind of stuff yeah they added more they kept just adding more and more and more um i think that like more universal mechanics like even with parry as the first like example of the universal mechanic taking taking over a game uh, mm -hmm. you know there were people that were against supers in in, in street fighter 2 right um yeah. and that th those those are representative of a comeback factor or whiffing too many special moves um yeah i yeah i agree that like people get it, i think we've talked about it a little bit on the show before but a lot of times that salt it's like it's it's misaligned expectations right yeah um it's i that that, like you said, it's it's I should be good at alpha at, at at six because I was good at alpha two or I was good at four or good at five mm -hmm. even, um. But that's you know it's it, like then that's an expectation that borderlines borderlines on entitlement. <laughs> I think yeah, um, yeah and that, that, that's yeah. where the salt starts flowing. I think is because then you get the you get the reality check, and at that point, whose fault is that? Is it the games? Yeah. It's probably the game's fault. It's because the game sucks, I think. <laughs> <laughs> like, and that's that's just how it goes, right? And yeah. then now nowadays, then now there's a big megaphone called Twitter or the internet in general to to like to let the world know that the game sucks. And that's what I saw with Street Fighter Five. Uh, I saw it with Cross Tekken too. Yeah, uh, I mean, even to this day, there's I I occasionally run into something on Twitter in terms of you know. People were like, oh, Crest Tekken was the worst game. But then, you know, we have mutual friends that love that game. And, yeah. you know, I gave it a second chance. And I started to love that game, too, uh, you know, the more I played it. But a lot of people just, you know, from their, from their initial impressions and whether it was the on this DLC or whatnot, um, they just, they couldn't get over it. The, the pay for gems and all this other stuff. And yeah. it just was, it was one of those things, like, it just... You know, that's all people will think about something negative when it comes to that game. Yeah, it really did have a bad launch too. Um, and so, like, that's the other side of it is that like a lot of those complaints about five were, were warranted, um, mm -hmm. and a lot of a lot of the complaints about cross were warranted. There were some predatory business practices with the gems. The on disc DLC thing ended up being a nothing burger in my opinion, but at the very least, yeah. it got people like consumer based thinking about what a software license is. <laughs> yeah. Um. For those in, in that are familiar or unfamiliar with that, um, Street Fighter Cross Tech and release and like the the DLC characters were basically complete. I think the frame data hadn't been tweaked appropriately yet, but people were able to mod their Xboxes and and mod the characters into the game. Um, yeah, and so you know, a lot of uh, brought up a philosophical debate amongst the community of being like, well, when I buy the game, I own the game, so I own, I own the, the stuff on the disc. Yeah, yeah. Um, on the physical disc, yeah. Yeah, but the problem is that when when you have like media, like a movie or a piece of software, you know, you, when you buy it, you're not you're buying the, a license to use it, um, and yep. so the disc is the vehicle to to get you that 
that that license, but <laughs> you're accepting that end user the the U, the EULA. You're accepting that at the install. Yeah. Um, it's just funny you said vehicle and the first thing i thought about was a lot of the the, the people there's been talk about like basically like dlc for vehicles now right like you you're, you got to pay to unlock yeah. certain features in vehicles it's just like oh you can go zero to 60 for you know in the base model but if you want to go zero to 60 in two seconds faster like you know you're gonna have to pay a little bit more like what <laughs> god damn it yeah like there there are so many times when i think about um like like how like we we're on the esports quest right now in the fighting game community and being like we're going to be like real sports and like how the real world can affect the fgc but there are times that i'm like or just in gaming in general and i'm like well sometimes i look about how gaming has actually impacted the world and i'm like i i think it's actually made more bad than good sometimes like all the loot box <laughs> shit and <laughs> oh man or the gambling problems and stuff I, anyway that's a much much larger issue <laughs> yeah, that's that's a whole different another topic altogether. But, <laughs> I mean, you know, growing up as a kid, like, I never thought, you know, video video games would be as huge as they are now, and uh, you yeah, know, for them to be as part of our as big of a part of our society now than they were when I was growing up is still crazy to me. Like the the kinds of money involved with some some games and and their scenes, like League of Legends, uh, you know, those kind of games. Like, I I could have never fathomed it getting to this point like you know i always looked at it as something as a niche and you know something that i did as a hobby and then mm -hmm. now it's like you know everybody games even even your mom and grandma you know they mobile game on their phones like <laughs> yep and it's just it's just crazy before there was always that kind of stigma like oh you guys have wasted your time and you know now everybody's doing it you brought up mobile games let's do our uh our monthly, I suppose, check on check in on how how's your Street Fighter dual progress going? <laughs> uh, I'm still doing it here and there. Just I don't know. It's just I haven't put any more money in it, and I don't plan to. I'm just taking what's what's being given to me, and I'm per perfectly fine with that. Nice. What's your team now? Has it changed at all? No, my team is actually. It's basically it's been um, was it Mad Ryu, uh, Chun Li. Bison and uh, and Honda, and then sometimes I'll switch in Elena for Honda, depending on on the yep. matchup, I guess. There you go. That's that's the team I. It's Team Scrub, dude. It's like yeah. uh, what is it? Uh, set uh, Cable and Sentinel, and then pick your favorite character <laughs> in Marvel too. It's yeah. Team Scrub. It's, Honda. It's Honda's good. Like I I honestly like you know I picked him initially because of my you know because I love Honda. Yeah. And then the more I learned about him and the fact that he has a basically a wall, a literal wall that he puts up to block projectiles, I was just like, oh, this is really good against some of these matchups. And I'm like looking at Guy, I'll throw Sonic Booms at like, and they just disappear. And I'm just like, yes, this is what I needed. And I was like, <laughs> I think I think what really made me laugh was I saw um, James Chen's tweet about that. And he's like, oh, I hate Honda and all the other games. Why do I got to hate him in Street Fighter Duel 2? And I was just like, wait, what? He's good? And then I started looking into it, and that's how I found out. And I was like, "Oh, okay, this is what he's talking about, probably." Because because I think he even yep. has a way to like heal himself too. So I was just like, "Yeah, I could see it." Yep, he becomes invulnerable if I recall correctly. Uh, that, that's the big deal. Is yeah, he, he pops his his special move or whatever, and then he you just can't kill him, and he just sits there, <laughs> which is pretty reminiscent of, <laughs> of fighting him in the actual game. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, I, I the I think the biggest thing with uh, going back to Street Fighter Six that I've seen lately is a lot of discourse for for Dalsum in particular. Ah, yeah. <laughs> He's always a very polarizing character, and one you know one that I plan on playing. And there's been a lot of talk. Like I think ever since uh, the official like Street Fighter Twitter put out a video for him and was just like, "Hey, this is how you play Dalsum," and people were like, "Why does he have this normal that goes diagonal?" <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He, he he just seems like he has more tools. Like every character seems like they have more tools in general. Like um, I was talking to my friend Natek yesterday and he was like, I can't wait for Cammy. I want, I want my dive kick back. And I'm like, she's got two, you, right? You know that? <laughs> and he's like, yeah, I know. One of them hits overhead. <laughs> it's just like, man, they, they just, they, they pumped every character full of juice this game and they got, yeah. everybody's got some new stuff. Well, I mean, I guess that's going to appease one one I guess one segment of the community because when it's come to older games like I always think about it in terms of like Street Fighter 4 and 5 like there was always 
constant nerfs, right? Like your character got nerfed through new versions and then, you know, the lower tier characters would get buffed and you're just like, well, now my character sucks. I'm going to play somebody else, right? Mm -hmm. yep. And now, like you said, like, um, I think that's one of the craziest things is like all these characters, like people seem to be excited for like the, the, the access to the tools that they're going to have and like how universal they are. Yeah. And, you know, there's like, I don't know, I guess there's things beyond uh, like the normal, oh, my character's in this game. Like people are looking, theory crafting stuff and thinking about what they've seen in the videos and how they can implement that, you know, using the new system. Yeah. Everybody's talking about how they're going to have a secondary, I've noticed. Mm -hmm. And I think that's more, um, that could potentially be more of a symptom of the fact that all the characters look cool and less so about matchup spread. I think it's just, there's so many cool characters that everybody wants to try. Um, yeah. And I, I think it has a lot to do with the, their choice to make the eight original World Warriors come back. Um, yeah. I feel for the people that played the four boss characters, though. Like, they don't <laughs> seem to have, like, a solid analog. I thought, I thought like, I thought all the ROG players would go to Marissa. But, like, after seeing Marissa's command list, I'm like, I, that doesn't really seem like it executes the same way at all. <laughs> yeah. Um, so maybe they'll all land on Honda with you. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I've definitely seen a lot more people saying that I think I'm going to give Honda a try or I think I'm going to give Dalsip a try than normal because like those aren't typically characters that a lot of people will gravitate to for their own personal reasons, whether they just don't like them or it's just not their, their kind of style or not. But uh, yeah. again, I think maybe the freedom of expression might open things up, open people's eyes up to to playing other characters because now like maybe you don't have to play Dalsip a certain way. If you just want to go, you know, go crazy playing offensive, then, you know, go ahead and try that and see how that works out for you. Yeah. I, um, I've even like considering Honda because they took away the hands mashing thing. Now I can do a quarter circle. <laughs> um, yeah. that's they They made Honda accessible. <laughs> <laughs> Dumb it down my character. Who's even, who was already dumb to begin with. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm also considering Lily, I think. Lily specifically to counter Dalsum, uh, which is mm -hmm. obviously putting the cart before the horse a little bit, but every every Dalsum player that I've talked to has said that T-Hawk traditionally gave them trouble. Um, mm -hmm. I don't really know how deep that's going to go because obviously it's a brand new game and maybe Lily, Lily yeah. sucks, I don't know. <laughs> But yeah, um, my, my my matchup knowledge with Sim is limited to five. Like I didn't really I didn't play him in the older games at all. Like he sure. just feels I felt weird. Honestly, like I found myself trying him in older games and uh I think I'm a lot more open to it now than I was before. Uh yeah. in terms of his like his limitations and the advantages that he has, like, you know, just my growth as a as a player, like I understand like how to use him now. Whereas as a kid, I was just like, Man, this guy jumps so slow, like what is <laughs> this? That's something that I was curious about is um we were we were in a group chat today and you were mentioning that uh you felt that your play your play style had evolved from heavy offense to defense over the years. And I was curious because a lot of us I I think there was one person in our group who was just like, I didn't even really consider you an offensive player, uh, which is an interesting point of view. Um <laughs> Yeah, well, I don't know. I feel like Maybe that's that's my again that's my growth and my kind of maturation as a player because when I started like you know I didn't I didn't know about frame data that kind of stuff I kind of just did what I thought was was cool and then you know it wasn't until I got humbled and you know people were punishing stuff that was unsafe and you know I was like oh I'm not able to do that like that's not just something that I can I can spam and get away with right yeah. you, you know you know it's, it's it's that kind of growth process like playing better players you know you get you know, got used to playing certain people online or ranked or whatever that let yeah. me get away with stuff and then go play somebody offline that's much better. And all of a sudden it's just like, no, you're not going to get away with that. Like, get out of here with that mess. And I, go ahead. I feel like when everybody starts to play a fighting game, like they, their main goal is to do a special move because that's the cool thing to do. Um, yeah. And I feel like for Honda that period lasts longer than usual for most characters. Because <laughs> I know exactly what you're talking about. You're like, can I get away with butt slam? Yeah. <laughs> that kind of shit, right? <laughs> that or how many times is this guy going to let me headbutt across the screen and he's yeah. just going to block it instead of neutral jump or jump back? 
And yeah, I'm but... just like, I'm waiting for you to do something different. But if you're just going to stand there and take this chip damage, like, I'm just going to keep doing it. Like, like for, for when I played Shun, like some of the cards that I like to play are like actions that I like to perform are like, you know, walk in, walk out with punish a low forward. And then the card that you would play is headbutt. <laughs> 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 you know, and you know, both are effective uh, in, in these kinds of games. They're designed to be, you know, different layers of expression. And, you know, mine, mine is a little bit more finesse, I suppose, but it's also like, <laughs> way riskier and way air, more arrogant in a lot of ways because i gotta walk in you know versus <laughs> being like here's a simple one size fits all option uh that's good but the character has limitations in completely other ways <laughs> yeah so it's balanced. I mean, you know it's when it came to four like you know i was you know all in jumping forward doing all kinds of stuff until yeah like i said until i got humbled and then a lot of people were like you really need to play Honda and a turtle star. You need to hold back, and you can just sit on a life lead. Yeah. And I was like, a lot of times I feel like when I get in those situations, I mean, yeah, it could be the smart thing to do, but a lot of times I end up losing matches that way too because, like, all of a sudden I've changed changed my game plan, right? Yeah. And what I was being successful with now it's like, okay, well let me sit back, and now their now their approach to the game has changed, so. Instead of like a normal jump in, they might do you know something with a different normal that recovers faster or uh, has a smaller smaller hurt box so that it doesn't hit you know my anti air doesn't doesn't work in the same way. Sure. Then I get knocked down and then you know steamrolled from there and I'm like I had that game and I you know I was holding back literally. Yeah. So no, I, I get that totally. Like I had that same that same like issue with Chun where it was like. You know, I'm rushing down. I don't think I should be rushing down. I'm about to kill them. I'm going to back off. And then I'm like, but I, <laughs> I, I let them kill me then. And isn't it better to kill them before they kill me? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You end up, you know, you end up making, making uh, rash decisions or second guessing like certain things that, you know, you were doing well. And it's just, um, yeah, I don't know. I found myself losing a lot of those situations where, you know, people were saying, oh no, just, just wait for them to make a mistake or just wait for them to jump in. And I was like, well, then I'm going to, you know, then they want, you know, they're going to play the ground game or something. And that's a weakness of mine. So I don't want to be involved in that. Let me yeah. just go in and, you know, finish them off. Yeah. And then that in turn creates a, a layer of predictability too, because, you know, if they can sm smell that you want to finish them off, then they're going to go, they're going to be able to hard counter you in some ways. Um, yeah. The, like the, the solution I came to for that kind of problem um, is that it's the issue is not that you um you let up and then they killed you the issue is that and in my case at least it was that i wasn't paying enough attention while i was rushing them down to their ten to to, to like to see what their tendencies were to know mm -hmm. how they were going to come at me when i decided to let them out and yeah. so that's actually a, a flaw on my part because it was that i decided to try to maul them and didn't let them play so i don't know anything about how they play anymore at all at all so therefore how the hell am i supposed to counterplay them when the, when they're desperate <laughs> yeah yeah so like i mean so earlier today like or i mean in, even in recent uh recent weeks like i've been playing uh street fighter 4 on pc ranked right and just you know here and there yeah. and i find myself um i don't know it's a mixture of like playing ryu and Zangief and sometimes Honda, like usually there's kind of levels to it, right? Like I'll play one of the my the other characters that I don't know that I don't play very well just to kind of see what I'm dealing with. Mm -hmm. And then if I lose, I'll be like, okay, now it's time to play Honda, right? And then even then, like, you know, I'll still lose matches and um it's all like, you know, you, you learn people's tendencies, or you're just like, well, if I do this, what's he gonna do in this situation? And there's a lot of games like I know initially I get pissed off and I'm like, why would you do that? Or, you know, that was a fluke win, what not, what have you. Sure. And then, you know, I try to find them in ranked and I'll try to, you know, hopefully they rematch me again. And a lot of times they do. And it's satisfying to get that, you know, to, to learn those tendencies, right. And figure out what people like to do. And it's just like, Oh, well, the last time I did this, you know, there's a lot of Cody players for whatever reason on, on PC to street fighter four. And like last time I did this, he did EX Zonk. And it blew up what I was doing. 
So the next time, you know, I waited it out, and then he eats off, and I'm just like, yeah, okay. And then the next time, he doesn't do anything. And it's like, you know, it's, it's that constant back and forth. And then I find myself um, going back to old habits, like you said, like I'll rush down people and not think about the options that they have. And then I get hit by something stupid and I lose. And I'm like, why am I losing to this shit? And it, it drives me wild. And it's like, I don't know, it's part of my, um, what, what do people call it? Uh, my toxic trait is like, <laughs> <laughs> is just playing, playing stupid and ranked and then getting pissed off and blaming like the other player or you know not not being accountable for it sometimes and just thinking oh that was bullshit like i should have won and yeah. you know in all honesty it's just like they made the decision because i was being reckless and they were like oh he's just gonna keep pressing okay well let me just do this ultra and i'll kill him and i'm just like oh my god and it drives me crazy yeah no i get it there's there's a point where like we reach an age i think where it's too tiring to get too mad about that stuff and i think that's when we ultimately yeah. land on the accountability angle right um but i've seen people like use rage to motivate themselves too like hey this guy's a scrub i shouldn't have lost to this guy it's my mission to beat him now and figure him out you know yeah. i've seen that kind of style of play too. be successful in our scene um in our stream chat here skills that kills asked what some stuff that go goichi does or go one does that john doesn't do i think with chun Li. And uh, I tongue in cheekly put win, <laughs> but um, you know I figured we're this is kind of a loose episode, so how about we 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 answer some questions from the chat too along the way here? So uh, I actually don't really I I just watched some Goichi play because uh, uh, Goichi is playing Chun Li and I'm playing Chun Li as well, um, and just this is a statement for in general like the Japanese have kind of picked up a lot of the stuff that I did. Um, I, I'd like to believe that they all came to the same conclusions that I did and that like, it's, 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 um, what's the word Grat gratifying or it's, yeah. uh, validating in that that means I'm on the right track as far as the stuff that I'm doing being good, if it's being re replicated or if people <laughs> are coming to the same conclusions, you know, um, like oh, they Nemo, just saw that Vesper arcade, they saw that Vesper arcade video and they're like, Oh, X copy that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, I had a there's a there's a very very long set, and uh, there's a lot of stuff that I did in there that I am seeing the Japanese do as well. Um, there's little things. Uh, I guess I can talk about them now because the, <laughs> this that's the other side of it is this beta is is it's over, right? The build is done. We're not playing that build ever again. Um, yeah. So any tier list that you make or any like opinions that you have. No one can really take them away from you because there's no way of proving if this character was good or bad anymore. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but like an example is the Chun Li's stance on stance, right? Uh, the the unstance can be canceled from frames 30, 31 through thirty seven. It has like a thirty seven frame recovery, um, and you can actually cancel the unstance into a low. So a lot of the high lows that people are putting on Twitter are actually suboptimal because they require meter. Um, I'm nerding out right now. I'm just cause I can, and I'm, my, my brain's fried and this is the, this is where I go. <laughs> <laughs> um, but you, you basically, you stance on stance, uh, and then you cancel that into a crouch short and you basically get a meaty low. That's how the math, the numbers work out. Um, uh, so that gives you, you or you can do stance overhead and they look really similar. Um, I call it the, the tea bag tech because she goes she goes she's standing she goes crouching and she goes standing again she goes up down up down and this, <laughs> when she goes standing she's either gonna hit you with the overhead she's gonna hit you with the low and it's gonna be meaty and eat shit <laughs> <laughs> um, or alternatively she stands on stances and then throws or stances and then blocks your dp so she has an option for every situation there um interesting nice. yeah so there you go. There's there's an answer for what what I do that Goichi doesn't do yet because I don't think a lot of people know about that. Um, but I did see a tweet about it already. There's at least one American player that knows about that. <laughs> okay, cool. I mean, I think well, see, that's the that's the problem with like the betas too, and then uh, things changing, right? Like you said, like this build, you know, the, the Street Fighter official Street Fighter even mentioned it, right? Like there's going to be balance changes and stuff like that on launch. Yeah. Uh, you know, stuff that they so. You know how much they were paying attention to stuff that's happening in the beta you know who knows but i mean 
there's definitely um, going to be changes, and I, I feel like that's going to be the initial thing we're going to see a lot of, from especially the the beta characters, right? It's like, oh, they changed this for Guile, or they changed this for Kimberly. This doesn't work anymore, mm-hmm. uh, and that's going to be the, I think one of the the, the biggest things you're going to see a lot is from those characters and then you know besides that you're going to get all the the tech from like the newer characters and stuff but in terms of like the beta characters i feel like that's probably going to be the biggest thing you're going to see at launch is just the changes and what's what's been removed or what's been added and what works now yeah and i i you know in the, in the theme of like our, our our previous topics that we've talked about on the show today like as far as keeping the salt down low <laughs> um street fighter 5 when uh when there were different beta builds for Street Fighter V, um, they started by giving everybody everything in the kitchen sink. You could confirm, you could link pretty much everything with Ryu and Street Fighter V beta. You could, like, Cami had, like, the chains that they could do were, were identical to four. You could do Jab Jab Strong, um, which, you know, they quickly took out of five. Um, and everybody kind of complained about it at launch because again in addition to all the issues i named earlier uh with the launch of street fighter 5 being poor the game felt nerfed uh and people didn't like feeling nerfed um nobody likes that feeling (laughs) yeah Um, and so i you know i I think it's a very wise thing that to do is to is to to do is to uh, prepare for nerfs in in uh, street fighter 6 compared to the open beta for launch version rather um I think I think all the characters are going to get worse. <laughs> Luke and Ryu have actually already gotten worse in the demo. Um, they they added a new yeah. like universal mechanic, but it by and large they're they're worse. So huh. keep your expectations in check, I guess. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, you know, I mean that's part of the benefit of not, I guess, maining one of those characters too. Is just like you know, I'm going to jump in and you know, I'm not going to have that that frame of reference, right? I'm not going to be like, oh man, they took damage away from Honda. Right? This combo doesn't work anymore, so I'm not going to come in with kind of that that negativity uh yeah. right off the bat like i could definitely see that from a lot of people i've seen it um on twitter from from some people when they're like well if they're gonna nerf this you know this is part of the reason i want to play this character and you know i might not play the game at all now and i'm like the game hasn't even launched yet like you're talking about stuff that was in a beta like it's literally you know it's in the word beta tester right like it's stuff that they want to test out yeah you know whether whether they think it's good it's too good or it's not good enough like you shouldn't come in with the expectation that this is how the final product's going to be. And if you are, I think, I think that's kind of short-sighted on your part anyway. By the same token, like, like this, you know, the beta, it, this open beta was not, it was a, maybe it was a stress test for sure, mm-hmm. but it wasn't a balance test by any means. Cause this, this ver- version of the game is a year old or it's a six months yeah. old. The first yeah. beta, this is the build from the first closed beta. And I think that was like in, August summer, or, oh the first you talking about the first yeah uh, it might have been November it might have been November actually I think the, yeah. the the two closed betas are pretty close to each other either September even either way it's yeah. it's it's not like it's it's way out of date <laughs> I believe oh, um, speaking oh go ahead I know I was gonna say speaking of stress tests like how are your your overall online matches in terms of like lag like did you play anybody like out of the out of the country or out of state like uh, I played against uh, a Chun Li player from from New York. Uh, we had mm-hmm. a duel for the best Chun Li in the nation, um, and I I won. So I consider myself the best <laughs> Chun Li in the nation. As of right uh, now, yeah, as, <laughs> as of as, as in the beta, of, yeah. As of the uh, end of the open beta. <laughs> yeah, and again, the game's over, so can't prove it. You, you get to hold <laughs> that title. Prove it. Yeah, they can't take away that title. <laughs> yeah, I actually did make. Um, I I was top, best in the world, ranked top one, uh, for four hours. <laughs> I think. Nice. Um, but in then, terms of like the connection stuff, was that was that was it solid? Was it was it playable? Like, yeah, did you feel yeah, no issues whatsoever. This entire beta, I I wish like I think um, there was one like there were a couple like internet spikes where like it would suddenly the rollback frames would spike up to five or something, and then it would get get stuttery, but then it would resolve itself um okay this this game has uh the best online experience that i've played in a fighting game period oh that that's great to hear like i mean you know i i played saturday mainly and i tried streaming and for me that was kind of a horrible situation but i think that was that's mainly because of either my not necessarily my setup but maybe my my uh, internet here because i had i had 
ping spikes from like I'd start the match at like 80 and then I would you know you could see the ping on the screen and it would go up to like 1800 and I'm like okay like I can't do anything let's let's just wait it out and I'd wait for the number to come down and then you know then then go back in yeah so that was you know I played again a little bit on Sunday decided not to stream just you know just play by itself and I had a much better experience that way so got to tweak some things on my end but okay Overall, from what I'm hearing, like it seemed, it seemed to be pretty good. Yeah, I, um, yeah, I, I streamed uh, from the beginning of like at, uh, beginning on Thursday night until like five a.m. or something. So I was fried, uh, and then I didn't stream for the rest of the weekend. <laughs> I basically just <laughs> played. Uh, I chilled out and I played Ken for the entirety of the weekend. I think I played a little bit of ranked Chun at the end of the night, but. Uh, or at the end, like at the very last night, but I, I don't think I'm going to be showing up any in any highlight reels or anything. <laughs> um, oh, I played in some tournaments too, but again, I, I played Luke for those and um, mm. just you know trying to fill out the game, trying to I, again the the game's going to be completely different in two weeks, and you know it's not. I don't know. It's I think it's more about exploring it and enjoying the experience with people. I figured that out yeah. actually is that I, like it wasn't necessarily about like climbing to the top of the leaderboard, getting famous and doing all that other bullshit. It was more just like this is <laughs> a really fun social experience. Um being yeah. part of the launch with the fighting game community is just really fun and being video able to share a social that. experience? <laughs> huh? Yeah, I yeah. said video games being a social experience. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. No, you know, every time that, someone that's, brings that's, up an addiction, that every time someone brings up an addiction, they're always like, "But my thing's different. My video game addiction is social." <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean that's that's really that's really great to hear, though, because I mean, even and uh, some of the people in our community, like we have uh, the the Spurlock brothers, right? One's yeah. here in Arizona, the other one's in halfway across the world, basically across the world in Taiwan. And they were played. They played some matches, and they said, you know, it wasn't perfect, but it was playable. So, you know, I think that bodes well for for things overall. Hopefully, yeah. really good for the the U.S. in general. So, I mean, we'll see how see how that goes. Yeah, I think um, we're we're in a really unique spot where because it's not just the new game launch; it's the new game launch after the pandemic that basically nuked the concept of in person casuals. Uh, yeah. and it hasn't really recovered for the street fighter scene. Um, yeah. Oh, that makes me think about something. Um, yeah. I've seen a lot of talk about the Capcom cup, right. And <laughs> yeah, that the fact that there's a lot of, uh, not just the prize money, um, <laughs> but the, uh, in terms of the offline versus online events. So there's a lot more online events now versus offline. Yeah. And I've seen some discussions about that and, uh, I was wondering what your what your feelings were on on stuff like that. So, I, yeah, like it sucks that offline events aren't coming back in in full force the way they they were before the pandemic. Um, mm -hmm. And like like we both know somebody that was affected by that. Armando Angelic was ex affected by the undefeated is not occurring uh, mm -hmm. this year or in the near future from my understanding. Um, and so a lot of those like mid-sized events just got torched. Right. I, I mean, he was on the yeah. show actually. He even said that. Um, yeah. And uh, the other side of it is like in 2019, there was also like a Twitter discourse topic of the day being like, are there too many events? I, I have to spend every <laughs> weekend grinding and I have to spend every weekend watching streams <laughs> yeah. and it's just too much now. And like people were yeah. complaining about that. And it's so I, I, I think no matter what, I, I think we're going to get both this time. If anything, they're going to, people are going to complain about too many online events and, yeah. uh, too, and then not enough in-person events. Um, yeah. I mean, I mean, that's something I thought I, I just, I was talking with Saber with last week in terms of like, like you brought up the fact that there was, there's a vet, there was events weekly. Right. And you know, during the peak of like street fighter four, like that was, you know, that was crazy. Like there was majors going on, all the time right mm -hmm. whether you know it was like oh well there's this one and there's this one and there's this one and like again like you said there was a kind of like an oversaturation and stuff and 
it became too much. Like, you know, you get, I, I would honestly just go look at results and kind of highlight videos, that kind of thing. Like, I didn't have time to consume all of that stuff over the weekends. Yeah. Like, it became it became too much. But what do you think in terms of, like, the, I guess, the accessibility for, for people? Because, like, offline, I think, is great, right? Like, you know, you talk about Evo, like, the big events, the CEO, Combo Breaker. But those a lot of those things aren't accessible for everybody it, just from a financial standpoint and depending on where they're at right if they're not a sponsored player like for us being in arizona evo's very accessible being in vegas right it's a four and a half five hour drive for most people and that's something that they can do you know spend the weekend there yeah you know versus going to ceo you know you've got to find a flight and hotel and all this other stuff figure out you know a whole you know, a whole lot more. And yeah. there's a lot more cost associated with that. I mean, the the issue is that, like, that was a problem even before the pandemic killed all the, the small events. It was, yeah. how do I, how can I afford to go to all the small events and the big events? Now it's just, yeah. how can I afford to go to the big events? I, I, I it, it sucks from an excess, like, making, I don't know, the online actually has done wonders to re remedy that problem and that now you yeah. don't have to pay that much money to to get in and you can just play from your home and your underwear and hope that you have a good internet <laughs> service provider yeah um i mean even then there's still going to be advantages for people who have a lot of money like i i see a future someday where like there's a um there, there's a model i think that uh that a lot of uh dota players use like that they do the gamer house thing where like Apparently, there's a couple gamer houses in here in Phoenix because real estate was 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 cheap for a while, um, <laughs> and <laughs> I just like I, I guess the the model is you just buy a house, you put a bunch of sponsored players in there, their job is to play, and then you make sure that they have good internet. Um, like, and you you could have like people that like you. Could, I, I think Maximilian has his own like internet node, <laughs> like he's actually wow. like paying for like like a enterprise tier internet. Um, and I think that a lot of those gamer houses run on that too. So it's like, like you're going to have advantages no matter what, like the hitbox debate about the money being spent there. We had just had Saber on a couple episodes ago about buying a really nice monitor. And, um, mm -hmm. I, I don't see, I don't see a solution here where money doesn't have an advantage. Yeah. Um, but I feel like the online has done, done a pretty decent job in, uh, equalizing that yeah i mean there's definitely trade-offs and i think um the biggest parallel for me in terms of that is uh when it comes to like the classic tetris scene right yeah so during the pandemic um you know they did online qualifiers uh basically did the event online right like they figured out a way uh to do that and because typically for that they go to uh portland for the i think the portland retro gaming festival i forgot what it's called i don't know what it's called nice uh, i was just in portland what, recently actually yeah that would that would be the thing right like they would go in october uh you know september october sometime in that time cool. they would go to portland you'd have to go to that uh you know the offline event basically to, to play in the uh ctwc the classic uh the classic tetris world championships right sure. and when it became an online event like I, I've been wanting to go to that for years. And then when it became an online event, all of a sudden I was able to participate. And, you know, even though I didn't feel I did particularly well, it was accessible for me. Like I was able to do it from my home. And there's um, there were other players that were much better than me that were also able to do that. People that were living in like Southeast Asia. Like there was a top player from there that people kind of knew about. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I'll, for the most part, the general public didn't know who they were and it was because of that that they were able to participate and and play in the in the tournament like there was even a situation i think because he's uh i forgot what country he's from but he had like a power outage at his home and he had to go to somebody else's house to go play and it's just like you know it, it went through uh crazy stuff like that but again it was it, it became a situation where the world might not have known who that person was without things being online Right. Like it gave that person yeah. who had no chance of going to Portland at all an opportunity that for the world to see who they were. Yep. And I, I think that like 
the the again in a post pandemic world where like we were all online for a long time to be like forced any forced online to begin with like yeah. i i feel like it the community and society in general has just found that to be more acceptable <laughs> uh, yeah. to be like yeah these opportunities do arise like i i um not to get too personal but like i i uh i recently got a new job uh and i start uh next week and uh mm -hmm. it's a fully remote job and uh, so it's actually going to, they're going to accommodate some of my, uh, my travel, uh, arrangements for, for, for competing in street fighter six. So like, I am super grateful, uh, to that, to the company. So shout outs to them. Um, so I will be at, uh, defend the North. Uh, I just bought the plane tickets oh, wow. like two hours ago. Nice. Uh, so I'll be at the week of July, uh, 10th, I think I'll be playing in NLBC on Wednesday and then defend the North that weekend. And I'm hoping to get some good good sets in with the East Coast guys. Yeah, um, infamous supporter John's going going uh, countrywide, <laughs> yeah. nationwide. <laughs> yeah, infamous is the is the way to think about it for sure. <laughs> oh, uh, that, I mean, it, it lines up really well, right? And that you're like, I, I, at least in my case, I'm like, I, I spent two years cooped up, and I want to see mm -hmm. the world. I'm getting married in October, and uh, you know, like my life is already going to be going through rapid changes. So. Um, yeah. Might as well uh, bust out Take into the in the world, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, but that's that's awesome. But again, like that goes back to, uh, I mean, you know, that's COVID in general, right? Like a lot of places before COVID was like, well, we can we can't do this remotely. Your job can't be done remotely. And then when we were forced to do it, all of a sudden yeah. it was like, well, here's a PC, here's a keyboard, and blah blah blah, and we want you to work from home. And I was like, wait, hold on, you said I couldn't work from home, <laughs> but <laughs> yeah. You know, now that it was a necessity, oh, we'll find a way. Like, we can't yeah. just, you know, have you employed and, you know, not doing anything. Yep. And there's all kinds of conversations about how work from home affects the human psyche or how it affects middle manager positions. <laughs> but, yeah. I mean, I, I work mean, from home. Like, there's, it has its advantages for sure. You know, waking up, you know, five minutes before you got to go to work. <laughs> yep. You know, that that that's a great thing. No commutes, that kind of stuff bathroom yeah. access snacks access like there's a there's a whole <laughs> there's a whole lot of advantages to that yep but i mean i don't know how how that affected the business negatively in terms of like camaraderie or you know morale or whatnot i mean i don't know some people thrive for those kind of environments and seeing people at work and walking through the door and seeing the secretary or the the security guard or something like that you know what i mean yeah there's a there's a layer of like routine to it uh, which I, mm -hmm. I is the thing, I think is going to be another really important thing about uh, Street Fighter Six, the launch. Whether you end up being a competitive player, or you you dabble in it casually. Like I I got like an MMO feel from the beta, uh, where it's like I can do something like after work and just get on and hang out with the boys and or the girls and just you know play some games in a big hub together and then jump off when I'm when I'm done and then get back on if I decide I want to. Or alternatively, take a break and play ranked instead, and then yeah. play ranked. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I definitely, I definitely see myself being more of an online warrior, probably more than being able to attend uh, attend offline events, just because of my my work schedule. Um, yeah. I won't have you know weekends off, so um, and I work at night, so that kind of just throws everything into into tizzy. Because now it's like, okay, well, this event's happening at four p.m. in the afternoon. It's like okay, well, I can sleep during the daytime, then go there, and you know, then what? You know, who knows I mean, how long the tournament runs, and you know, I, again though, the tournament could be an online one, and it could be on the East Coast, in which case, like, you're it's a morning tournament, or maybe you have like training partners on the East Coast now because you can, yeah. and they're on a schedule that works for you. You know, yeah. um, I, I think that I, I I I'm excited for just like the the player base to explode and, and to the, the number of players that we can play is yeah. not just limited to our local scene anymore. It's limited. It's, it's the entire country. Um, Canada, I think is a, is a viable connection. Mexico is a viable connection. Taiwan, yeah. you know, uh, that, that just, yeah. that fundamentally changes like the concept of locals too, because mm -hmm. then you're like, well, like you said, I, you're going to stay online because your schedule doesn't match with the tournaments running locally. I think yeah. by and large, everyone's going to be online. So if all the that means like the the competitive stuff 
like online has more value competitively than offline does. Um, which, you know, we were, we're, we've been getting there anyway over the course of the past couple of years, but what does that mean for your offline tournaments? You know, like for a scenes yeah. offline tournaments, are they, do they still need to be competitive? Yeah. Uh, like that's actually where I think it's going to go is uh, that camaraderie, uh, the office camaraderie that you mentioned earlier. Like, I yeah. think that shows up that that's the angle that the offline locals take um, compared to the sweaty online where you go, <laughs> you go, you go, you compete online and then you go and practice and, and learn and, and socialize offline. Yeah. Uh, hmm. Actually, you know, I didn't think about that. Uh, that might be a good idea because, like, I talked about it in previous shows. Like, I might do something online as a, whether it's tournaments or I don't know necessarily ran bats or like a league or something like that. Sure. Um, thought of doing that on my on on like a Monday, and I don't know the the idea of like I don't know. I mean, I, I guess I'll have to see if that itch for for offline and the social aspects gonna gonna come about because. I don't know. I just never thought about just doing something a little bit not. I mean, it's still serious in a sense because like you're still kind of trying to learn stuff, but not like a tournament. You know what I mean? Just doing kind of a hey, once a month on a Monday, I'm gonna go hang out here. You know, have Big a potluck session. or something, right? Yeah, yeah, and like let's just hang out and let's play games offline and and chat or whatever, and do something like that. Yeah, that's what I think. Um, oh, and then, uh, you know, skills that kills us in the chat here mentioning, um, that the new PC esports arena, he'd like to see a hybrid solution, which, you know, has been experimented with, with strive. And, um, hmm. I, I think it, I think it worked well for strive. Like, I, I know that a lot of like venues did it out of necessity because they couldn't get people to come out. And so they had to fill a bracket somehow. Um, but I believe that street fighter six is online is good enough to run to run a hybrid tournament maybe we do that for our offline locals then even is to run everything online in a battle hub and everyone just sits at their computer ah that's not very social though i want to talk shit <laughs> yeah, i want to like run up behind someone's and... setup and talk shit though <laughs> well, well, we have god's out here he brings up a good point in terms of like the current 3d fighters right they don't have a good good enough online setup so i mean they're still going to be offline and if they include uh, Street Fighter Six into their into their uh, into their events if they wanted to do that that could be something too so I mean who knows yeah but uh, I don't know like I really never thought about doing something into, I mean I I've thought about doing like I know they did like a I think a Christmas potluck like, one time at, like the gaming zone oh yeah and, Steve did that yeah it was really yeah. cool so I don't know it's giving me ideas in terms of doing something different like. I ran a couple of team tournaments and a couple of like wacky format tournaments. Um, that would actually be it. Like I, I wrote up a big list of, of like potential tournament ideas and I threw them out there. Um, I don't know if mm. I've even said it on our show, but like I have no intention of running any events uh, for, for street fighter six. Cause I just want to be a player. Um, yeah. But one of those ideas, but that is, you know, obviously the TO brain keeps thinking and then we're always talking about TOing, <laughs> you know, once a week. So I, I, uh, you know, a team tournament I think would be a really sick idea um, because that that in-game team tournament looks really robust. Um, yeah, and, and you could do like a KOF style even, or you like that. I think that's the big thing that like fighting games are missing is like that social team-based aspect. Like playing on ranked sucks. Playing by yourself on ranked sucks. Playing on ranked with with your buddies is a little bit more fun when you're winning. It's a little bit more fun. Um, yeah. so I, I feel like if there's a way to create that team or that party aspect, like smash brothers got that, you know, down to the, down to a T, um, yeah. I think that that would be a good, good angle for a local community as well as be like, let's just run three V three team fights. And this is a good way for you to get to know your teammates and you're going to naturally trade strategies together that way. Yeah. I don't know. You're giving it, it's, it's giving me ideas. Like, I mean, you mentioned not doing any kind of TO stuff, like, Part of me is like, I just want to do it just for the social aspect, because like, <laughs> yeah. But yeah, like, like it's just giving me, giving me thought to the fact that like, it doesn't have to be like something super serious. Like, you know, I know that they've had, you know, you guys uh, in the past have had casual sessions. Hey, we're beating up here for casuals or whatever. But uh, I don't know. I just, I never really thought about that in terms of doing other things, because that's something that we would do. 
uh, back in Alaska is like we would have tournaments and uh, my wife would make food and yeah. people would be like, oh, yeah, like this is great. You know, we just we got to play tennis tournament and we got dinner or whatnot. And, you know, I'd have to, I'd have, you know, obviously something I have to discuss with like a venue to see, you know, if they're OK with it. But um, definitely something to definitely something I'm going to think about more. Because, like I said, like if I'm going to do anything, it's going to go around my schedule. So, I mean, if you guys are free on Monday nights, that's probably when I'm going to do something like that and just be like, hey, I, you know, again, like I've got over what 10 years of experience running events. Like, I don't mind going back into that if that's the case. And it's just uh-huh. like, I don't know. It's, it's giving, it's opening me up to a lot, a lot more things right now. I mean, Monday nights, you're talking about Monday nights online, right? No, um, not even online. It's are you talking about offline. like a just like a a casual session or whatever? Um, yeah, like I'm, I'm, I'm like the more I think about it, like online could still be like a uh, something different, like more more competitive focus since everybody's you know at home and you know, I guess you know, like you said, the competitive aspects kind of moving to online. Yeah. So maybe maybe do a monthly social kind of thing where team tournament or something along those lines that isn't you know as serious or or whatnot i think um uh so i was in hawaii this past january and that's basically what they do they have a monthly like potluck and they mm. just have it in, the, in their discord they just plan that month and then each month is a theme like i think the the, the time i was there was surf and turf um yeah. which was tight they, like i just they had <laughs> awesome scallops and there was just yeah. like a bunch of different kinds of beef like it was hella good um <laughs> And yeah, I just, you know, me and Collins happened to be there that weekend and we got to go and uh, be part of that community. And, it, you know, they were all playing different games. Um, yeah. I, I, I think that that's the angle that a lot of people in the community actually want. It's not necessarily like, let's get sweaty and, and you know, yeah, compete. Let's and try to win some cash. <laughs> yeah. No, that's it. Like, like when I, so I did um, a few years ago, me and... Maynard, we're trying to do like this puzzle puzzle game community thing, right? With Tetris, yeah. surrounded around Tetris, and we did a few. We threw a few events, and then um, there was one where we kind of just were like, "Hey, we're just going to set up stations with all these very various puzzle games, and you know, whoever wants to come out." Like, I don't know. There was a few people that came out, but yeah. you know, that was a fun day. And I'm like, maybe just do something like that for fighting games, like literally just just casuals and potluck and something like that. You know, this is how what happened with, with MujiCon, right? That's that's basically, <laughs> I started like that being like, I just want to do the community thing. And then it ended up like, like the, the, so many people showed up to the tournament from our local scene that like people had to take it seriously because everybody was there. <laughs> and then it just ended up like, I, that's how I ended up like running more competitive events. But I had no intention of doing that originally. But like, I remember Ray called it MujiCon and then a bunch of people started bringing food and like it was bring your own console bring whatever the hell you want we got we got the space of uat like it, it just turned into a a big deal um and maybe that's what we need right now uh that's that's what the community that that would i think be a big enough differentiator from the online sweatiness um likely like yeah i mean you know you can still you know have whatever the venue fee and just be like you know venue fee and hey we're gonna have a pot like somebody bring some food and honestly like i don't know when it comes to like potluck stuff uh, so random like i didn't even think we'd be talking about stuff like this but uh like i want people to like bring stuff that they make like, oh yeah it doesn't have to be anything like you know from your from your ethnicity or like a cultural kind of thing just bring something that you make like yeah. i think of like um who was the one making those like bacon wrapped jalapeno poppers was it uh, oh not yeah soy? that was not soy that was his deal yeah, Marvel. you know do stuff like that you know let's have a potluck and you bring yeah. that and you know, I'll have my wife make some food or my daughter could make some baked goods or whatever. And we'll just have a good time. Yeah. I, um, I, the, the, the closest vibe I got recently was your birthday party. Uh, it was last week and you know, we, we had it at a restaurant and it was, it was just a good time catching up with people and not talking about fighting games, but then actually talking about fighting games. Cause that's what we have in common. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, I, I, yeah, that's, it's just a side of the community that I wish I had taking the time to try to experience sooner um i think yeah. a- aj was i was listening to our show with aj a couple a couple of days ago and uh he mentioned he was like you know what memory do people have of the community when they look back fondly on it and very very few people can look back on it being like a match it's usually a memory with friends 
maybe yeah. in, in the context of a match, but it's usually the the memory of the people that you experienced it with. Yeah, who was who was there with you? Yeah, who was there with you, or like the circumstances led that led up to that? Yeah. So I, you know, I at the moment, like for me, like my training partners for these games, like they're just names on a Discord list, and uh, yeah. Compared to like you know being at a restaurant and seeing Chiron after three years or oh, <laughs> four or five yeah, years. Like... The yeah, dude, so like what came... the dude stayed in shape too, by the way. I gave him a hug and like just like hugging a rock. <laughs> <laughs> that was uh yeah, so when it came to planning that, like uh my wife gave me a she was like, Well, who do you want to invite? And then I was thinking about it and I was just saying, you know, what? I'm gonna invite some people from the FGC kind of thing, right? Yeah. And because I hadn't seen people in a while and like I was probably gonna see a bunch of family and like family friends uh this week for my daughter's graduation. So I was like, you know, why not do something different? you know, instead of the usual people I'd see on my birthday. So, and then like my, my oldest friend, I know him since second grade. He, you know, he messaged me happy birthday. And then he's like, you got any plans? And I was like, I'm going to be at uh craft 64. Ah, if you so that's how that. yeah. And that's how he ended up, that's how he ended up coming along. And then when he, you know, he was sitting there and like, I guess, I don't know if he didn't expect a ton of people there, but then he was like, how do you know all these people? And I was like, honestly, like I know everybody here from playing Street Fighter and fighting games. And he's like, oh, really? It's just like, yeah, like these are all my friends. Yeah. And he's like, you know, he was kind of a uh, kind of taken aback by that. And you know, video, it was kind of video cool games are time. social. <laughs> yeah. No way. <laughs> yeah. That's that's um, basically our the thesis for our podcast as a whole. Video games are social. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, oh, and then you yeah. have. Uh, now I'm talking about uh, bar fights. Yeah, bar fights has been a great it was been a great event for me too. Like I've I've won I've won bar fight matches I was in. I've lost <laughs> bar fight matches I was in. But like you know the the uh, the time spent there, like it's been it's been great times. Yeah, I um, there's like bar fights is kind of overloaded because there's like there were events that that uh, I ran, me and T dot ran. And then there were events that Steve ran, and then there was a whole other like layer of locals that happened uh, at the film bar, uh, which is unfortunately no longer in business. Um, but I remember the film bar was like the place to be for like Power Rangers or for KOF, and I think Tekken even for a little while. And then the pandemic killed that too. But when I was trying to bring some life back to the Street Fighter Five scene in 2022, I think. Um, uh-huh. I, I I basically started just setting up at Film Bar, which was awesome because it was close to where I live. Um, and then the place went out of business, so that bummed me out. But I really liked the Film Bar as a venue for casuals. I'd really like to get to a place like that someday where we have, um, yeah, like a bar or something we can just frequent at. That would really hammer home that vibe. Like imagine if we imagine if we could like run a weekly at Cornish Pasty or something. <laughs> You know, that's kind of dark that you're talking yeah. about. Yeah. 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 That's true. Turn on the lights, guys, please. <laughs> yeah, I got I got some candle candle wax on my monitor. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, that would be a great spot though. Uh I don't know. It'll, it'll make me think about I was just actually just that was what was running through my mind just now. I was like think of other venues and you know, things that aren't something more centralized. So Yeah. Again, like, I don't know. It's making me making me think about the whole TO side of all this and Yeah, you're getting, you know, you're getting the itch getting back yeah, into kind it kind of where my kind of where my place is because like i don't you know just just because of my schedule like evo's already out the window right so i've already come to terms with that because i don't have enough time off or i mean i do but then i wouldn't have any time off for the rest of the year to do family stuff and things like that and as i've gotten older like you know that's taken precedence versus you know let me go to this tournament or whatever so i'm already not going to evo so i'm already thinking about other things that i can do that you know, fighting game wise, because I feel like, yeah, I feel like there's going to be a part of me that just wants to, to, to host events and do things. Yeah, I feel you. Um, which, if you had limitless time and you could only pick be- between being a TO and a player at this point in your life, which would you pick? I'd probably be a TO. Really? Like, like that, just because, like, I don't know. I've, I've, like, when it comes to being a player, like. I got I came to this realization years ago, especially particularly when it came to Marvel Three, because like I loved playing Marvel Three, but I was terrible at it, and I lost. I don't know if I if I went through the history of every game that I've ever played in Marvel Three, 
I probably lost 95% of the games that I played, right? But I had a ball doing it. I, I'll, I always remember this session I had at a friend's house where I lost like 30 games to this guy that played like, uh, who did he play? Ghost Rider, Iron Fist, and somebody else. And he was just, you know, he was walking through me the whole time. But, you know, here I was just having a ball. And, yeah. you know, it was just one of those things where I came to re the realization that I didn't put a lot of time into this. And I have to just be okay with where I'm at. And for a lot of people competitively, like they can't do that. Like they feel like I'm playing this game competitively. I've got to be good at this and I've got to put time into this. And I just kind of came to the conclusion that, you know, I'm playing this for fun. And even though, yeah, I'm getting my ass kicked and, you know, like Abe was saying like winning's fun. Like, yeah, winning's great. Like I would love to win those games, mm -hmm. but at the same time, like I know, I know my place, I know my skill level. Right. And the expectation isn't there for me to, to go back and forth with that particular player, right? Like I'm probably going to lose the majority of these games, but as long as I'm having fun, like that's what mattered to me in the end. So yeah, if I had to choose, like, yeah, I'd, I'd definitely be a TO, I think over a player just because of the, the lack of time. And um, I don't know, I get, I get a lot of fulfillment, get a lot of, uh, get a lot of enjoyment of watching people, people gather in the, the social aspect and seeing people, see people hang out and just have fun. I get you. No, I, I think that that's, uh, I, again, like it kind of, the, the pandemic recontextualized a lot of, a lot of things for me as far as like what I want to do with my life and you know, what, what my values are. Uh, I was very career driven, um, before the pandemic started and you know, a lot of, a lot of events that happened during those years resulted in me not being so career driven anymore because you know, when you're locked down and, you know, you don't know if the world's ending or if you don't know if people are out to get you or anything, like the people that you count on are your family and the people that really close to you. Um, and you know, like, so like, where's I going with this? So I, I found myself wanting to put more priority and focus on family life and home life as well. And I feel like doing that plus the fighting games is always going to be very difficult. And so for me, at least my, my expectations are my goal, because like, I think y you all know, like how, how deep into this game that I've gotten as far as like creating content for it and just talking endlessly about mechanics and all that bullshit. I think that a lot of that has to do with just me trying to check one last box, uh, in my youth here. Um, my, my, uh, the spry 35 year old that I am <laughs> um, in that, you know, I could kind of going back to what you mentioned about expectations and whatnot. Like I, I, I definitely got that vibe as I was playing street fighter four, as I was playing frost, I was, as I was playing Marvel and five, um, like mm -hmm. of the people that I started this journey with slowly, jumping off the train to do other things. And sometimes those other things were to complain about the game that I was playing. And that's where I started really getting that chip on my shoulder that I mentioned. But a lot of other times it was just people being like, kind of like how you mentioned, where it's like, this isn't really for me. This isn't the time that I want to put into it. I would want to, there, there are better ways to spend my energy. And I, uh, yeah. I feel like I'm going to hit that point pretty soon too. I just have this one last box I want to check off as a competitor. Um, I got, yeah. I got a taste of seeing it, like seeing a lot of the friends that we've interviewed on the show. They're in our chat right now. Nam and, and, and skills that kills and God saw and company. Like they've all placed high in tournaments before some of them on in the national stage. And I, yeah. I want my shot at that. I think, I think that I, uh, I, I ran from it. I ran from it, the pressure of, of, of succeeding with that because I wasn't ready in my twenties. Um, mm. and I would ar arguably, I'm not ready now, but I feel like now is a good time to do it before I reprioritize my life a little bit. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, I mean, like you said, I mean, you know, you're getting married later this year and yeah. you know, family life and stuff like that's going to come, come after that. So like, who knows, like, you know, this, this would be a good time for that kind of stuff. And I don't know. It's like, I, like I said, like in terms of, um, expectations and stuff like, um, my son wants to play this game and yeah. part of me is like, again, like it's not so much being competitive. It's, it's, it, you know, it's something for an experience for me to share with him and for to teach him and for us to learn together. 
And I see that as something that I'm looking forward to more than going to a tournament and doing well. Right. Like that to me is like, oh, like I didn't expect any of my kids to play these games. Like, yeah, they, you know, they've, they've played some in the past. Like I've, a couple of my kids have entered Tekken tournaments in the past because they like playing the game. And I was like, are you sure? And they're just like, yeah, I want to join. And I was like, cool. I was like, you know, because they'd seen me be passionate about it and been around the scene a lot. And it was cool to see them, you know, partake in that in the past. And for, for my son to want to play this game and for us to basically be on even ground, like, you know, it's not, it's something that we're both interested in is I think probably the the thing that I'm looking forward to the most. Yeah. I, uh, what are you going to do if he's better than you? I don't think that's going to happen, but I mean, <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll cross that bridge if we get there, but, uh, <laughs> if big, like if, I said, though, right. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I don't think he's at that point yet. <laughs> the only game like he can beat me at right now is Dragon Ball. And that's just because I haven't, I haven't taken the time to learn that game. And sure. believe me, I've thought about it. Like my ego has thought about it plenty of times after he like get, after I get hit by some, some mix up and then I get killed. And I'm like, if only a boy, like if only I knew how to play this game, like, I've thought about, you know, hitting up Ryan or somebody else and just say, Hey, put me through the ringer in this game and show me what I need to do and what I need to need to need to learn. And, you know, just to get that, that point to kind of put him back in his place, but nah, I'm not going to do that. <laughs> <laughs> well, skills that kills in our chat says if, if your kid beats you, just say he wouldn't have beat you in the beta. And <laughs> nobody can prove you wrong, man. The game's well, over. I mean, the we game have, was solved. We, were, we have been playing the demo here and there. And it's like, like I yeah. said, like he's still he's still a very kind of raw player. So it's like I you know, I, I pick up on his tendencies pretty quickly, which is something I don't think I'm particularly great at, but it's you know, I think it's more of a shortcoming of his than than anything. But yeah. you know, I'll take I'll take those wins and just like, hey, no, you're not gonna get away get away with that. <laughs> it's funny if you compare and contrast our stories here, it's like I'm kinda kinda living in the past a little bit and you're you're really focused on the future. Um it's 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 an interesting dynamic. I uh, to, I, I there, I just had this like idea that again, like playing four, seeing the people that succeeded in four, and then switching to cross or quit, switching to Marvel, and seeing the people that didn't come with me to Marvel, and then seeing the people that didn't come with me to cross, and the people that didn't come with me to five. It's like I. I spent so much of my like early fighting game career trying to prove that the way I was learning how to play fighting games was the right way. And mm. I felt that, that like being able to play multiple games um, like at a high level and being able to figure them out really quickly would prove that. And in reality, the people that I was trying to prove it to just weren't playing the games that I was playing. And so they didn't, I, I never really got that fulfillment. And so street fighter was really unique in that, well, this is the series that everybody comes back to, you know, we're going to get a, our, another 2009 when street fighter five drops and everyone's going to come back and we're all you know, going to have a lot of fun together. And that didn't fucking happen. <laughs> <laughs> and so I, I, you know, I've just, I, that's the chip on the shoulder. It's just, I've been so bent on trying to show that I like that, like, the way I learned to play the games was right. And I don't think that that was very healthy. <laughs> so I'm still, I'm still trying to fight that to this day. I think that like, I, I do get on my high horse about six, but like, um, again, seeing the, seeing the conclusion that you've come to as far as being like, here's where I am and here's where I want to go. And it doesn't necessarily have to be the path of the competitor. You know, it, yeah. it, it recontextualizes that, that, that viewpoint my viewpoint a lot as far as like am i just trying to bully people into having imposter syndrome you know <laughs> <laughs> well see i mean you know it's like like my path you know it's obviously not for everybody like i've seen comments from whether it's facebook or twitter in terms of people that felt like oh well i felt like i didn't have it and i was just like you know to be a competitive player and i was like you know part of me just thinks like well why do you have to be a competitive player but again, it goes back to that, like, I'm a very, per- very competitive person by nature. Like, I want to win, you know, just about anything, like board games or whatever, it doesn't matter. But sure. at the same time, it's like, it always kind of has to boil down to, to just having fun. And it's just like, if that competitiveness 
takes over me having fun, then, you know, that's not what I want. And I think about a lot of times, like when, you know, even the pandemic, right? When it came to like, hey, I want to stop. I want to stop. I want to quit this job, right? I hate this job and I need to get out of it. But, you know, at the same time, it's the pandemic and I should be happy that I have a job. And like people would be like, why don't you be a pro gamer? And I'm like, one, like that's a whole different ball game. And yeah. two, like I don't want this to be a job. Like this is my, this is my outlet. This has been my hobby since I was a kid. This is my, my way out of reality. And the last thing I want is for that to be something that I'm doing constantly and doing for work, doing for views or for clout or whatever. And it's just like, have I streamed in the past? Sure. But a lot of times it's like, it's more for personal fulfillment fulfillment, or just to kind of track my progress. It's yeah. not, hey, can I get a hundred people to watch me? Can I get, you know, myself partnered and monetized and that kind of thing, it, you know? Yeah. It's, I don't know. It's just, it's just never been something that I want in terms of like video games per se. I, I, I know that that path pretty well. I traveled down that too, being like, you know, I'm going to run a monthly, I'm going to promote the stream that this, they we're even running, you know, the podcast here on my Twitch stream. It's like, I, 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 I did try to play the content creator role for a little while. I just, once I hit that point where I'm like, you know, my, for, to be clear, my goal is to make top eight at one major this year. Mm -hmm. um for street fighter 6 i don't have illusions of placing a high in capcom cup or anything i'd like to actually qualify for it i think that's actually something i'd that would be a fun goal but whether or not that yeah. lines up timing wise is a whole other question um but, i just what's the, what's the prize money for that i remember that was listed as like in the prize money screenshot that i saw I was like, if you qualified, I think you got a certain amount of like a thousand dollars. Yeah, that's probably like it'll probably just kind of travel <laughs> realistically. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um that, like that's the other thing is like the numbers are big right now because it, it just <laughs> you know that 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 shit gets taxed to hell and back um yeah. and then you know like i i don't know the whole like getting famous thing like get becoming yeah. an influencer getting posting clips on twitter and stuff you'll notice that i didn't really do much of that this beta um i yeah. it's just like getting i got to network enough to with with the top players to know that people are going to be willing to practice with me and i think yeah. i'm good there i think that's the vehicle for the stream or that's the the motivation for the stream which is mm. i i stream for to record myself to improve and i stream to network so that way i can play top players but that's very different than doing something like what the big dogs are doing like what maximilian's doing or something yeah. um which is somebody that i fought in the closed beta this weekend and i realized <laughs> that i didn't want that fame <laughs> so yeah oh man <laughs> well, uh, cool. just going back to the um you were mentioning the social aspect about stuff and yeah yeah it made me think about uh oh you were actually there um there was a few years ago i man i don't i think it was six seven years ago or sure. was it that long damn when i held a barbecue at the park and i just invited a bunch of people co-workers friends or whatever and a ton of people came out and i was just yeah. like holy shit this is a lot more people than i expected and i think that's what like you know you, talk, you talked about that with with muji con right in terms of like you know you had a lot more people coming than you expected and i don't know i guess i wouldn't mind a situation like that you know I, again not something super competitive but like i mean who knows what happens when you know a bunch of people are there <laughs> and they're like you know what let's let's run a, run let's a pickup tournament competitive. Yeah, yeah let's run a tournament since everybody's here <laughs> even then though it could be a for fun tournament using the mode in the game like it, or it yeah. could be a tournament with extreme battle turned on with one of those drones that flies over you and shoots you you know oh yeah i didn't I, oh that's a good one too because like i completely forgot about that mode until the demo and uh, me and my son were were messing around with that, and I was like, you know, they don't have a ton unlocked in there, but I was just like, this could be a fun, fun casual thing to do, yeah. Like random rules or whatnot, or the, you know, you got the bull, or you got the 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 the, the uh, what am I thinking of the uh, the one where you have like the random conditions, like you got to get yeah. knockdowns or whatever, yeah. 
that could be something to do instead of a team tournament. Just say, hey, we're going to have an extreme battle tournament. Yep. Jess and I played um, the extreme battle where it just rewards knockdowns instead of like actual combos. And it, it basically turns the game into that footsies game that Hi Fi built. Mm -hmm. um, you're still playing the neutral, you're still playing fundamentals. It's just that you got to make sure your combo ends in a knockdown and that's it. Yeah. It's pretty cool. <laughs> it's like fencing, I guess, in a weird way. Nidhogg, I think, that fencing game. Oh, Dino, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, real quick about game. that barbecue you mentioned. I was just thinking about that the other day because uh, I remember that. It was, um, I think, I went by myself and then I got to, I think, like, me and Kaya had to go get ice or something. And that's when I, like, I got to know your, your daughters and your, your kids a lot better that day. And now, since then, seven years have passed. So they're, they're, they're all yeah, grown up now. Like but, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I remember, I remember visiting that and yeah I'm, we're gonna see them this weekend too <laughs> yeah. So, yeah very cool um shoot i had a, i had another point i wanted to make oh yeah sorry yeah i wanted to get this one out of the way i wanted to vent about modern controls um oh. i saw this really cool reddit post recently on our street fighter about like somebody who's like you know they they i guess they can't move their left hand as well so they haven't been able to do street fighter games very well but they love street fighter um but modern controls, like I guess, is just like the right, the right ingredients as far as like handholdy, but not too handholdy. Um, like it, it still allows for expression while also not like forcing, uh, forcing people to play with like auto combos or something. Like simple modes in past games, you know, they're they're just more like, yeah. um, like there's actual like thought and depth put into the modern mode. And a lot of people are playing modern in that thread and they really liked it. And, you know, there'd just be people chiming in who would say, you know, it should, that's great. And we appreciate that you love that you like playing the game, but it should be banned for competitive play and it should be separated out of ranked queues. Um, yeah. And uh, I, you know, I try to usually present things in an even mind, um, but I'm really low on sleep. Uh, so to the people that hold that view of being like, Hey, you know, this, this person's enjoying this game. And like that person in the, in the post, like the guy was like, you know, I haven't been able to play fighting games competitively ever. And I almost cried because now I can, you know, now my disability isn't going to keep me from playing the game. And so to hear somebody be like, well, actually it should be banned competitively. You know, you can go fuck yourself. Um, <laughs> that's just like, I get, I get the idea of, wanting to preserve competitive integrity, but yeah. we are having a fucking argument about competitive integrity every other day, whether it's about a cracked beta or it's about hitbox or it's about, um, what else that people are angry about like lately or like, uh, the, the modern controls. Yeah. The modern controls is the other big one. <laughs> like so, someone's always cheating somehow and it's, yeah, for particularly for this accessibility one with the modern controls one that really really steams me because it's like if you really cared about the competitive integrity of the game then you would want as many people as possible to play the game so you can really prove that you're the best otherwise yeah. it's just fucking gatekeeping yeah. like you can give up some of your advantages on stick like there's a lot of conversations about stick and about like should classic be detrimented? Should modern even be better than classic? And it absolutely fucking should be better. They need to incentivize people. Like, like there's a lot of influencers that are saying is modern too overpowered. Some of that's like hot air because it has to be marketed that way. Otherwise players aren't going to want to play it. Like yeah. nobody wants to play the handicapped mode. They want to play the mode that is an alternate mode, a legitimate competitive alternate mode. And that's what modern controls is. And if you don't like it, then go back and play the old games where that's yeah. where they are the, like the game naturally gatekeeps them the new game yeah. let the new game let, let people enjoy the new game <laughs> yeah i mean it's like it's like you said i mean they have i feel like they put a lot of thought into it too because i didn't know about the omission of the like some of the normal moves right i knew about the yeah. damage reduction i heard about that like the 20 percent damage reduction and you know i think that's fair right and then and when i heard about the removal of some of the normal moves that that made me think like okay so they're really thinking about this and you know there's gonna be a negative to that so it's like yeah you might have access to easier controls or one but one button whatever supers. command grabs or reversals or supers or whatever but i mean you're losing out on other things and i mean it's like 
like you said, like at the end of the day, if you're the better player, if you got better footsies and better neutral, this guy doesn't have, for example, this character doesn't have their crouching medium kick, which is like their best footsie button. Mm -hmm. So if you're the better player at the end of the day, you should be able to overcome that because they're basically handicapping themselves at this point in, in other ways. So yeah, I'm right there with you, man. Like I'm, I'm all for more people being able to play this game and uh, you know, I don't have any problem with people people using the modern controls. If I lose to it, then I lose to it. Like you know, um, it's something that I mean, I, I think that got talked about a lot with Street Fighter Fives and how how easy it was to do certain things. Yeah, and you know, and I've always been supportive of that because I was like, um, you know, when it came to like tier list, it's always like this tier list is applicable to to the two top you know two top players being at the top of their game and you know in that thing it's not applicable to you right and so if we even the playing field and everything else is even or whatever and more people are uh, able to play this game then it comes down to you versus the player yeah and it's just like at the end like if you're the better player then yeah you should win regardless of the control scheme like i don't think it's overpowered in a sense at, at least at this point i mean you know that's who knows where it's going to go you know once launch hits Right. So like, let, let's take, I like, I, I get that argument, right? And it's kind of a wait and see almost, but like, it, it goes a step further where like, even if it is more optimal to play it, we've played like third strike is that way where you have multiple supers and people pick the yeah. best super all the time. So if you want to play, you know, you know, Ken SA1, you can, or if you want to play Makoto SA2 versus SA1, you can. Um, yeah but it might not be optimal and you got to deal with it because you see it's on you to adapt. And so I'm like, if modern controls is better for the game, if the game is actually designed for modern controls, like there, an example is that one button super thing. Uh, when you're in burnout and you have no drive bar, you can't get out of things unless you burn a super. And when you're in block stun, mashing super through block stun and, and continuing your block is really hard. If you have a one button super, it's way easier. So there is like an objective advantage that modern controls has with some disadvantages that aren't proven out yet. But even if it's better, so what? Like we like in 2009, everybody thought pads were the inferior thing because they couldn't plink in Street Fighter 4. And we let that rock. And it's on the pad players to decide if they wanted to convert to stick. And a lot of them did. Some of them didn't. They played with it. And in the same way that if you're cl- playing on classic arcade stick, and you're worried about hitbox players or modern control players having an advantage over you, pick one or don't. But don't keep people from choosing that. Don't like shrink the competitive pool so that way you can say that you're better than other people. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I'm a little I'm a little angry about it. I just like I, I saw that thread and I'm like, this this is a huge, huge like Reddit post of this guy just pouring his heart out, being like, look how happy I am that thank you Capcom for making this thing, making me be able to play this game. And we have one person going in there, there several people being like, actually, you know, this, this it's better if you don't play this game. It's better for me. I saw the word infantilizing. <laughs> the, the, the new control scheme infantilizes players. And I'm like, well, you can go fuck yourself. This is the exact same okay. conversation we made about mash DPs in four and buffered yeah. inputs in five. So, sorry <laughs> that was that was my big rant about modern controls i knew i had a i, I didn't think it was gonna be that angry i just i i it's been a long day <laughs> yeah but I, i'm glad we have the same opinion was there was something else i think we were i was going to ask you about that i thought we would have a similar opinion on i forgot what it was i think it might have been uh, the tournament stuff um yeah i don't know either way i i think we've got a we had a pretty good theme here where we figured out that maybe Maybe offline takes the camaraderie approach instead. Yeah, maybe. I, I could definitely see that. If not, I'm. I mean, who knows? Maybe I. Maybe I'll be the catalyst for that. <laughs> yeah, and even then, man, it doesn't even have to be like. It it could just be fighting games at a potluck that you throw, and it's not even a public fighting game community thing. It's just your friends, right? Yeah. I, I feel like those kind of insular gatherings of just having close friends playing the game, like that's going to be good for the scene overall too. Um, yeah. We're, we're more than just Arizona scene now. I think that's, that's the, that's the weird and scary part is our, our boundaries have changed. Like in, in 2009, it was all about West side versus East side versus 
Tempe <laughs> versus T- Tucson versus Yuma. And then gradually yeah. over the years, it just turned into Phoenix versus Tucson because all the other scenes kind of like shrunk down. And now it's yeah. just whatever. <laughs> it's just like a couple yeah. of people from Phoenix and a couple of people from Tucson playing competitively. And I don't think that, I don't think that a lot of people are going to come back necessarily to play with the competitive people that stuck around for five, but they will play in smaller cells and then I might run into them online. Yeah. Cool. Well, any, any big shout outs for the conclusion of our, our kind of impromptu post beta blues episode. <laughs> Video games are social. Are social. <laughs> and then just for for sheer numbers and fun, out of out, out of ten, how would you rate your open beta experience? Um well me trying to stream it, I'd probably say that was like a negative five. That was horrible. <laughs> like I gotta fix that. Um I'd say overall otherwise, like I thought I thought it was really good. I would probably say a solid eight. Cool. Like I didn't I had I had a good uh the matches I had when I wasn't streaming, like the, the connections were solid. Like I felt good about that. Um, you know, I like the the battle hub stuff. Um, kind of just being able to kind of literally walk around and find like a cab and just be like, oh, there's somebody just sitting there. I wonder if they'll play me. And then um, in a way, like it does kind of like, you know, I, I grew up in that era. Like I didn't, you know, I didn't play tournaments and stuff in the arcades, but that feeling of like, going to going to walk up to somebody that was playing play them and beat them and then see them get up and leave like that's there and yeah. i love it and it was just like i walked up i beat somebody 2-0 and then i was just like oh you don't want to play no more okay i was like that's all that's what my goal was like i used to go to the arcades and when i went to philippines and uh when i graduated high school and like yeah. that was uh tech and tag was the game at the time right in 2000 and i'd go to the arcades i'd see somebody playing tech and tag i'd jump on the cab just to beat them like i'd see them playing unknown like the the final boss i would jump in just to beat them and then until they didn't have any more more coins or whatever that's horrible and then i would beat the game i would oh, beat the man. game and i'd be like here you get to watch my ending <laughs> that's so. horrible <laughs> but also hilarious i yeah that was that was me <laughs> Like I, I, when we ran, like we, we did a bunch of tournaments this weekend, um, like actual like FGC ones, but then we also used the in-game tournament mode and, uh, the, uh, it was a bunch of Air- the Arizona crew that, um, or the Phoenix street fighter crew specifically. Well, actually it was Tucson too. We all just got in the discord call on the spiral series discord. And then, um, mm-hmm. uh, we just all entered a bunch of tournaments like in the in-game tournament. Mode. Cause there were like 28 running at the same time or something. Oh. Um, and so each of them was a 32 man bracket and we all entered and uh, it was kind of like playing in a pool, uh, like in a major where you're just going around and checking people's pools and seeing how they're yeah. doing in their bracket and whatnot. And it was oh, fun. So you were, were you able to like walk up to like the cab and then like see that particular, like the bracket for that? Uh, you were able to, you could watch the match for a turn that it was running for a tournament to actually see the bracket. Mm-hmm. Um, I just asked the people who were who were in the Discord call to stream their monitor. Oh, okay. So they streamed it in the Discord voice chat, and then you could see the bracket when they pulled it up. Because I don't That's think the cool brackets though, like... are available online anywhere, unfortunately. Yeah, I, I hadn't, I hadn't, I kind of forgot about that mode. And that's, that's, you know, like you said, like that's kind of the, the, the whole major aspect, right? Like, yeah. you know, you find your friends and like, oh, what pool are they at? <laughs> yeah, like, man, that's like... Bringing, bringing back memories for me because I used to, organize like spreadsheets and stuff and yeah. terms of people's like times and what game they were going to be, what, what pool station they were going to be at. And it's just like, Oh, you guys got eliminated already. Oh, what's going on now? It's four o'clock. So-and-so is about to play. Let's go over there. Yep. And that, like, we had the same kind of in- interactions where it was like, Oh, uh, Big Mac and, and Sia are about to play. Uh, they're playing at the same time, but they're playing different matches. So some of us go cheer on one guy, other of us cheer on a different guy. And we'll like in, yeah. in, in Discord terms, that just means look at this stream instead of this stream, <laughs> or look at the, move move one of the main monitor and turn that audio on, right? And I so I didn't yeah. have to. I, you don't have to run across the venue like at a major, <laughs> but it, it very much was that because it, it turns the game into a team sport. That's that's what yeah. we really I think we're missing is that uh, that camaraderie is that that team Arizona feel the team my local scene feel yeah it's so hard to get those in an online 1v1 game but if you can find ways to create it like stuff like that i think that's that's the path to success hey so how about your hitbox journey benny how's that been going 
Yeah, so, I was gonna say in terms of the in terms of the hitbox stuff, like the thing that I'm trying to focus on right now is is the movement aspect of it. I mean, Dalsum's gonna throw a big wrench into that, but I feel like with the changes to how his teleport works and stuff like that, that might that might be something that I'm not. I'm maybe I'm overthinking thinking it at this point, right? yeah. Because I'm thinking it in terms of Street Fighter Five terms and you know instant air teleports with you know Tiger knee motions and stuff like that. Sure. And, you know, now now it's a literal direction in three punches or three kicks. So yeah. it might not, you know, it's it's not going to be something that it's going to, I don't think it's going to be as big of a hurdle as I was initially thinking after finding that out. So, and, and, I, and I guess like in terms of learning, it's mm-hmm. become, um, I feel like four is just a more natural game for me to play um, instead of five. I think yeah. I don't know. I, I I just I don't know if it's just the V trigger aspect of it all, or um, I don't know. Just like I have more, I'm a lot more comfortable playing different characters in four than I am playing playing different characters in five. Like five, it's pretty much like, yeah, I could play Sim, <laughs> and like you know, I I don't uh, combos yeah. and stuff like that aren't, aren't as natural to me. Like the the kind of the base game of four. Like I was playing Cami earlier, messing with her trials just to see what I can do, and finding out some of the shortcuts in terms of like DPS and stuff. Like I didn't, I didn't know because I was, you know, I was doing trials, right? Mm-hmm. And there was one that's like stand fierce into into uh, can or is it cannon spike. That's the DP. Yeah. Yep. FADC backwards. Right? Ultras. Yeah. Like I didn't know. Yeah. I didn't know that. I, like if I hold forward, I could hold forward, press fierce, and then if I press. I think if I was it let go and then press kick or something like that, then that would just naturally do that, do that cancel right there mm-hmm. instead of doing the, you know, instead of doing the, the, the normal hit and then doing the, the DP motion and stuff like that. So I was like, this is like a lot easier uh, than I thought it was. That's actually, that's in non fighting, uh, non hitbox too. Like you can make the forward on, on, like you can move forward and fierce and then down, down, up, down, down forward for, Kick. like you can you can make that part of the motion on stick too um, really like yeah. i don't know i guess i never the That's only shortcut two that one. I, the, the only days. the only shortcut i remember in uh really man forward, like, I don't know. down just... down forward so forward plus fierce down down forward plus kick right i, I don't know i guess i just i never did it that way like yeah. i just never thought of doing it that way when i've played on stick all these years like it's always just been okay hit the normal did the normal hit okay dragon punch motion and you know whatever button i need to press oh oh so man. i've never We're gonna I've get never you into done... the whole world of cancels now oh shit yeah like, I've never done... <laughs> okay yeah i've never done motions that... well then again i mean you think about the characters that i played right right you're playing like... charge characters yeah. i was playing honda i was playing i was playing guile in street fighter 2 so it's just like i didn't you know the cancels I know is like okay I'm holding back hit this press forward and press a button that was my cancel you know my cancels in the super or my cancels in the in the headbutt or sonic boom or yeah you know going up and you know whether it's flash kick or sumo smash or what that's so, another another reason why I think this game's going to be hard man is like um I think there's a lot of players like that that they they only know only know how to play charge moves but every charge character in this game is a hybrid um, like yeah. Blanca and Honda and Chun, like they're all they're all hybrid characters. Guile, Guile is even Guile has a quarter circle back motion. <laughs> yeah, the, the see blade, again, right? I, I completely forgot about the blade when I was playing. I forgot everything. Yeah. I forgot about the EX access to EX moves, and then like I was playing and I was throwing Sonic booms, and I was just like, then I did a I did that motion on accident, and then I saw it come out, and I was like, hold up, he has this move too. And then I was trying to figure out how to throw the boom with it. And I was just like. Oh, just do this, then hold forward, and then press punch. And I was like, <laughs> like it was opening up like a whole world of like new stuff to me because I was just like, I haven't played in so long. Are you going to become a mechanic junkie like me now? Because now, you, now you've seen the whole new world, man. And Hitbox I, I showed know, you man. the way. <laughs> I think, I, like, like I said, I've talked about, I've you know, in our in our chats and stuff about possibly even selling this thing. Yeah, but like. Um, you know, I don't have the traditional hitbox. I got I got the the junk food uh, snack box, the snack box micro, sure. and I just really I love the portability of it. And I bought the uh, not the like the PS5, not the Xbox Series X one. I bought the the light version that they had because the it's like uh, PC Switch, and I think that's basically it. Yeah, it was probably and, the only one they had in stock too. <laughs> yeah, but uh, you know, and then I I thought about the case that I bought for it, and I just bought the black one because. 
I was looking at the other case and the other case that they have for the light doesn't take artwork either. Cause I was kind of thinking back on it when I was looking at stuff today, cause they have an artwork case for it now. And I was, I was looking at it and I was like, how come I didn't just buy that in the beginning? Then I had to go look at their product line and I was like, oh, cause they didn't have this at all. The other case is clear, but it doesn't accept artwork in it. Got it. So I was just like, oh, that's why I went with the black. So now I'm, you know, I'm a, I'm a sucker for wanting to like customize, customize yeah. my stuff. So I'm like, I think I'm going to buy this artwork case and I'm going to put some art in and, you know, just have that. I think it, I, 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 you know, I haven't done something like that in a while. So, so when, when you say artwork case, is it like, I, you have to take it, like, is it a full on another snack box or is it like a special case that can, I like... know they, they sold the case uh, separately. So oh. you can basically can take the innards of the, the snack box I have now and just throw it in that artwork case. And, you know, now I have one that can take art templates. Have you thought about just buying a second one and then having one in case G wants it? Um, I don't think he's going to. Um, I guess he's, I actually he's thought playing about that he can't churn. <laughs> yeah. No, I thought about that. I was asking my daughter about it, actually, because uh, not for necessarily fighting games, but just the just the controller itself, because she likes yeah. to play rhythm games. So I was just like, she could possibly use it, use a, a secondary one for that. I mean, you're going to be sitting on, after you rip the, because all you're ripping is the PCB, right, out of the... Um... Yeah. Out of the old one and putting in the new one so you're gonna have a you know a shell of an old one and you could easily buy another pcb and just drop it in so. yeah that's what i was looking at because they, they do sell those those separately too like they just have like the older ps4 version i think yeah. it's just ps4 and uh i think it's ps4 switch and switch and pc and i think they and, like, sell like an add-on um, ship to get to make ps5 functionality work too um if that ends up yeah. being part of your use case but um, no they have a different like, be... pcb out the other oh okay that might actually be um, a, a more practical uh, practical path to actually getting it because I think that they're still really hard to get, the junk food arcade ones. They're all sold out. Um, well, the light ones are in stock now. People are looking for those. Oh, nice. Okay. So, yeah, it's, uh, I don't know. I really like this little thing, so I'm just like, that's part of like, I don't know, it's, been a, it's kind of been a back and forth. It's just like, at first I like, after a couple of weeks, I felt like this isn't for me. I should probably sell this, or I'm just going to use it as a novelty kind of thing, or for other games. Sure. And then I've kind of, kind of gone back to it, and I'm just like, you know what? I think I'm going to give this another shot because, like, I really, I really, like I said, I really like love the portability of it, and um, I think, especially with that change to Dalsum, like, I think that's going to make things a little easier. Yeah, you might but not I can have play to do like, DPS, man. Yeah, because I'm going to play. Um, like I said, I was playing been playing cami play I've been playing cami and ryu like i'm still not ready to play like a charge character full-on charge character just yet mm. um but i've been playing cami and ryu and like i think um who was talking about that uh automatic was talking about that in terms of using the the hitbox or leverless controller yeah was that he prefers it because like it doesn't uh he doesn't get unnecessary jumps like you know you could be in the middle of doing something and it's like oh man i got to jump and like, yeah like you really like I was playing as Ryu earlier. I, I actually like clipped it, and I was just like, I'm staying grounded the whole time. Like there's no accidental inputs for me to like jump up and do something else. Like I'm just throwing fireballs, and I'm standing here because you're, I'm not. You're, you know, you're talking about this. like if if I'm doing a quarter circle forward and I accidentally you know swing too hard with my with my circle and end up in an up forward position and cause the jump, right? Exactly. Yeah. Those yeah. kind of situations. Yeah. Like I was just sitting there. I was I was sitting there just I threw like four fireballs on a row, and I was just like. I'm not missing any inputs at all. Like this is great. <laughs> nice. That's awesome, man. Um, yeah. Your point earlier about how forward it kind of just feels natural to you. I think that, I think that there's a lot of like every, every game has an internal timing, right? For blocks done and for hits mm -hmm. done and for stuff like that. And I think that we all relearn it every game, but it sucks at the start. And that's why cross tech yeah. and, and like you, you notice that every every new Street Fighter that comes out, everyone says it feels slow or it feels clunky. Yeah. Like every new even six, every every new one. It's because that internal rhythm has just slowly gotten slower and slower. And so four is really yeah. I don't I know four's rhythm is actually similar to crosses where you go dot 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 dot. But in five yeah. it's like dot dot dot. Like it's it's so I, I, I feel like your rhythm for, is probably just set at four and you don't have any incentive <laughs> to change it 
really, right? <laughs> yeah. So, ah, uh, just fun, fun tidbit uh, there. Well, we are running at. This is one of our longer episodes, actually. We haven't done a long one like this in a while. Usually, we we cut out right at six thirty. Um, but uh, you can follow us at uh, twitch.tv slash spiral series, youtube.com slash spiral series, and on Spotify if you search for Absolute Guard. Um, thanks, everybody, for the likes and subscribes. We just talked on this show about how neither of us actually gave a shit about being an influencer anymore. So I'm saying all this stuff, but truly, reach out to us if you want to hear about a specific thing on the show because like, we're open to ideas. I think it would be kind of fun. Um, and uh, I'd love... Like, I know that there's a there's a very core group of people that listen to this and they're close friends of ours and thank you very much for listening. And so I'd love to make something that you guys want to hear, you guys want to listen to. I, th- I, I hope that doesn't sound like a manufactured YouTuber thing. Like I, I'm genuinely talking like Nam, AJ, whoever, like fucking reach out to us and tell us what you want to hear. <laughs> so cool. Have a good night, guys. GG's and we'll see you next week. Later, guys. <laughs>